Welcome back and in this video we are going to learn what are the things you should know before jumping on to Spring Boot. First let us see how we can get started with Spring Boot. There are various ways you can create a Spring Boot application like uh, there is a Spring Initializer which is an online utility where you can create a Spring Boot application or you can use one of your favorite IDEs also. So, if we go to star.spring.io, here we can choose what type of a build tool we want to use and what is the language we want to use and select the Spring Boot version and provide uh, usually Maven metadata like what is the group ID, artifact ID and things like that. And here you can choose packaging as jar or var and we'll talk about it later. And uh, I chose Java 17. And here we can choose what kind of a features we want. Uh, we can also call them as starters. So here let us start with simply a Spring Web Starter. And if you click on generate, it is going to generate a Spring Boot application as a zip file. And you can extract it and import into your favorite IDE. So here I have opened the project in my IDE, IntelliJ IDEA. And we have this one single class which is called a main entry point class and here let me create a simple hello controller so we have simply created a, a controller with a single endpoint so which is accessible at the root so if i start the application you can see it is going to start on port 8080 using tomcat server so if I go to browser and access localhost 8080, I can see the response. So it is as simple as that. Creating a simple uh, Spring Boot application and then you can directly create an endpoint and access it. But how it works, where it is running, where did we configure to say use Tomcat or where did we specify to start on port 8080, nothing. We have not configured anything out of the box. We are uh, able to create a Spring Boot application and start it and it's working fine. We are able to even access an API endpoint. So it's all kind of a magic, but we are going to uncover all this magic in the going forward videos. Okay. So now it is very tempting to go further and explore Spring Boot, but I would say we should take a step back and understand a little bit of history about the Spring Boot and why it, Spring is created even forget about Spring Boot why Spring is created in the first place what kind of a problem Spring tries to solve and what is the reason for creating Spring Boot and what kind of a concepts it is built upon so it is very important to understand all these concepts so that in future uh, by default it works fine but if you have to customize any of the Spring Boot features if you don't know the concepts behind it it is going to be very difficult so that is the reason I would like to uh, go through some of these concepts based on what Spring and Spring Boot is built so in the future videos we are going to take each of these concepts and talk about them in detail okay in this video let us talk a, a little bit about the Spring Boot history so before Spring came into the picture, uh, J2EE is the main platform uh, Java applications are created on. Like it provides uh, various services like uh, transaction management, security and all in terms of using application servers like uh, JBoss or WebLogic and WebSphere, things like that. So these days we are using Spring and Spring Boot uh, transaction handling and all. But before that, there is a J2E, uh, EJBs and Entity Beans which provide some kind of a similar features. But the problem is those features are provided by containers like uh, application servers, JBoss and all. For that, you need to build your application as EJBs, Entity Beans and then you need to deploy them into the application server then only you will be able to get those features which is kind of a very problematic in terms of testing how do you test it unless you deploy into the container you won't get those features working so that is one of the biggest problems so to solve those rod johnson uh, 
created a spring and a community gathered together and then uh, it evolved over the time initially spring came up with this xml based configuration you create your uh, beans and then you configure them in xml and you can boot up an entire application without having to deploy your application into kind of a container or anything like that but still you can get those features like security transaction handling all those features without having to deploy into any of these application servers which is a big deal and then some people see xml as very verbose and didn't like it much and then spring team came up with this annotation based approach to configure the beans so instead of configuring all those beans in xml now we can simply annotate our classes with say component add component or add repository things like that and it became much simpler in addition to these approaches there is a java config approach also where you don't annotate those classes directly uh, instead you can provide your configuration uh, using java and use add bean annotations to define those beans so people mostly since then use annotations and java config uh, instead of xml which is cool but the complexity is as I mentioned in the previous video, Spring provides a lot of modules. Um, Spring data, Spring security, Spring batch, Spring integration. So you need to configure a lot of things. Again, it's going to be like a lot of boilerplate repetitive code. You copy from your previous project and then you tweak it to your new uh, application needs. And it's kind of a very, very repetitive and boring part. And also problematic like uh, it looks very complex to configure all those pins. So Spring Team thought about how to address these uh, concerns about this boilerplate configuration and then try out a few approaches. But finally, uh, they inspired by various other uh, frameworks like Rails, Drop Wizard and few others and came up with this Spring Boot approach where Convention over configuration is, is a fundamental concept, which means instead of you configuring every bean in the same way uh, from application to application, Spring Boot application takes some assumptions about how you are going to configure based on sensible defaults. And if it is not the way you want to configure, then only you configure explicitly. Otherwise, Spring Boot is going to take uh, some convention based assumptions and then auto configure things. So Spring and Spring Boot is created based on various design concepts and best practices and uh, design patterns. Like there are concepts like programming to interfaces, loose coupling, high cohesion. So these are some of the concepts and also uh, various Spring features are built by leveraging some of the design patterns concepts like uh, dependency injection, front controller pattern, template design pattern and proxy. So all these design patterns are used behind the scenes by Spring and Spring Boot so that uh, when you are using some Spring Boot features underlying you are leveraging these concepts without even you realizing probably. So we are going to talk about these concepts and these design patterns and how Spring Boot is leveraging them to provide some of the features. We'll talk about them in the next videos. So stay tuned for the upcoming videos. Thank you. Bye-bye.